Hello, it's T Bear here, and we are down at the Brighton Surf Life Saving Club. Standing with me at this time is Kim. Kim. That's right. What an event. It's, it's a great event, mate. Yeah, we're very happy and um, we're about to open with um, just under 180 sculptures. 180, well, now I believe you've been here since the very start. Yes, yes, we started um, in 2008 with um, 34 sculptures from 13 artists and this year we have nearly 180 sculptures from over 100 artists. Wow, I've done a walkthrough with some of the pieces and they are insane. The artist work that's gone into them and people have travelled from across the country. Yep, we, ha we have artists from Queensland, New South Wales, Victoria and Western Australia exhibiting with us this year, as well as South Australia. Wow, that's an awesome footprint across Australia. Now, obviously the event formally opens tomorrow. Yes, it yeah, Wednesday the 24th of January he opens. And I've been looking at the weather and we're in for some perfect beach weather. Perfect beach weather with a heat wave in between. So as long as people um, hat up and umbrella up and, and slip, slap, slop, they can walk through and see the sculptures. That's right. And the sculptures, obviously, on the outside, they're 24-7, but the smaller, intricate ones, they're available within the club rooms? Yep. We, we, have, we have basically two lots of sculptures. We have 75 outdoor sculptures, which are displayed along the seafront and in the park here beside the Brighton Surf Life Saving Club. And we have, I think it's 99 indoor sculptures and they are exhibited upstairs in the Surf Life Saving Club and on the park but behind the club in a large marquee. Um, and the indoor sculptures will be open from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. The outdoor ones can be seen from sun up till sundown. Now, for someone that hasn't been down here before, do you have a personal favourite yet, or are we not allowed to discuss that? <laughs> uh, look, I haven't. I haven't. There, there are some. There are lots of, of stunning pieces, and I mean, there are some classic pieces. We we have two artists who are exhibiting with us today, who have had pieces in Bondi sculptures by the sea, which is you know a really big event in New South Wales, and their works you know are shown here. Um, so look, I'm 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 just um. I'm holding out on that, on what my favourite is at the moment. <laughs> That's understandable, especially seeing they haven't formally been judged. So <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> well, there they go. Thank you very much for that, Kim. Pleasure. Enjoy. Enjoy. Cheers. Have a great event. Hello and welcome to the 2018 Brighton Jetty Sculptures Recap. This is Lexi. My name's T-Bear. We've got a fantastic event for you this year, brought to you this time by Petretti Wines. That's right. And we here at Cabana Productions filmed the entire event that was 150 hours worth. But don't worry, we've condensed it down for your viewing pleasure. That's right. So this is the perfect recap. Sit back and enjoy. First off, we'll take you for a tour through one of the tents. As you can see here, a classic piece of red gum made by Peter Stenford. Treated bronze and sterling silver to make this one-of-a-kind piece. What amazing work. Oh, here we have a piece by Mr. Warren Pickering. A vintage wheelbarrow. Flowers in a wheelbarrow, even. For most people, it would have just been a rusted out wheelbarrow. But for an artist like this, it's just been created into what you see before you. The flowers, the stems, the leaves. And the pieces next door, in the same fashion by the same person. What an amazing set of work this is. So much meticulous detail has gone into it. Oh, here we see angelfish, K. Whitmarsh. Broken tiles, grout, has created this amazing oceanic tile. This view amazing what can be created in recycled art. Oh, we see a piece here by David Huntley, a sea nymph, stainless steel ribbons wrapped around 
a stainless steel base. So much detail in such a small thing. Oh, here we have a Mohican Indian. Oh, of course, here we've got another fine, intricate piece entitled Ellie, made with wire frame, fence, clippings, wires, beads, gentle, protective. Oh, here we have two more pieces in that same fashion of the broken tile, the grout, to create a beautiful picture. In fact, these have created portholes, like the window if you're looking out of a boat. Oh, here beside me now, we have Ancient Mariner, carved from Western Australian limestone. And here we have Treaty, made of copper. A solid, strong, heavy piece of art. That's right, both these pieces are very unique in their designs. Upcycled work, something we like seeing here. This was a door attached to a bedroom. They put a mirror in and then they've created the art in that same fashion that we've already seen. Summer fun. Another one of these upcycled timber wardrobe doors. With glass ceramic, the title just keeps swimming. We can see a silhouette there of a mermaid. Colours are marvellous. The glass. Oh, here we can see the Banksia branch. Anna Small created this one. This is mild steel and copper. This is one of the living art pieces here at the sculptures event. Oh, here you can see a piece named Flame Grilled, made by Glenn Duncan. Recycled steel, stainless steel. Cutlery, we can see knives, forks, spoons. Made into the shape of a dragon's head. A multi-purpose piece. It's artistic, but it can sit the top of the fire pit. And as the fire grows, it comes flying out his mouth. The detail is amazing time and effort that's gone into a piece like this. Here we see the Southern Cross by David Doyle, made out of plasma cut steel. Amazing concept. Oh, here we've got two native pieceries, Vagarus of Youth. We see the emu there made completely of copper wire. So lifelike. Oh, here we have a cry from the ocean. A recycled wooden base, wooden branches, and then they've shaped into a sea turtle. Sensational. Here we have the Celestial Awakening from Tracy Gribble. Jarrah wood and mild steel. It almost appears what we now know as a dream catcher. Here's a piece, bushfire ready, wood, glass, 
stainless steel cups, copper, steel. You'll see it appears that all these cups are filled. That's where it's semi-loaded, ready to go, and bush fire ready. Here's a piece of abstract art called Alto. Acrylic paints, resin. It creates this 3D picture with splashes of color and light. This is Isla 3, driftwood, steel, and a skull embedded in there. Creepy yet amazing design. Is an ancient desktop. Pine wood, oil, you can see the knots in the wood. Such an amazing individual piece. Oh, here we have layers of life from Penny Frankel. Made completely of recycled materials. A surplus of South Australian catalogues have been created and then pulled apart and made this fish-like design. Here we've got the found object art. It's got hedges. All items that have been found in Vanuatu, well and truly recycled with driftwood and steel. Here we have another desktop, this time by Chris Reed, created from Red Gun. To work with the, those knots that you can see from the tree. Here you'll see not a prettier sight, bit of a controversial piece with this one. Christian Wallers. It's a bird within the tile, but if you look closer inside, you can see rubbish that's been found in the ocean. Here's another piece from Scott Hedges. It's another piece of found art. Steel, timber, concrete. All from remote, isolated locations. Here we have a long lunch made by Penny Frankel. As you can see, it's a bird feeding its young but it's created with steel. Here we have the lost boy that wouldn't grow up, created by Mark Spurgeon. The steel work is amazing, the colors, the textures. Such time and effort has gone into this, it's amazing. Here we see a peacock named Sheffield from Marty Knight. There's all this detail, in fact you can see it's created with shears. Blood, sweat, tears have gone into something like this. Here's a piece called Weathered Soul from Chris Reed. Two border collies created by Andrew Whitehead, weighing 30 kilos each. Look at the design, look what's in them the bolts, the steel. Here we see another piece of abstract art made completely of steel. You can see car wheels and odds and ends, there's spokes in there. 
all to make such an intricate piece. Here's Lou Stevenson's, a clay model entitled Her Gaze, looking off into nowhere. There's so many to choose from in there. There's, I think there's some of my favourites still yet to come. 